I just remember thinking, I can't believe this is happening. You know, it's all those sort of last minute wins or last minute draws or whatever that make all the difference. I don't think for a second anybody thought we weren't going to win the league that day. All City fans know what typical City is and you can't quite put your finger on it. Just like kind of euphoric really, you know, without realising what the hell was about yeah. to happen. I just could not believe it, what had happened. I mean, you never see it again, will you? But I just could not believe what had happened. I wouldn't change any of it, but the way it happened. When I thought we'd win it was when we beat Newcastle. The second goal went in, I think the IR scored. And I just jumped up on the lines and I thought, that's it, we've won the league. Clichy, Torre to seal it! That's it! The win secured! Yaya Torre again! It's Newcastle nil, Manchester City two! After that game, I went working um, in Norfolk, talking to a um, barman down there. He said his mate was a tattooist. So he said, I was talking about a tattoo, and I thought, right, I'm doing it, I'm going to have a tattoo. He was, he was saying, are you sure, are you sure? I kept on saying, are you sure? So I said, yeah, it's fine, no problem. We've done it now, it's only QPR. I was at Halifax, and I was at Shrewsbury, and I was at York, and you know, I've been to Stockport, I've been all over the country watching City lose. Um, <laughs> so I've been through the dark days. I've, I've earned the right you know, um, to get excited. I think with five games to go, everyone was certain. It was almost our title. You know, it was just like a carnival atmosphere and I was thinking, yeah. But, you know, what an amazing day. And it was a beautiful day as well, wasn't it? Which it was. isn't always I, the case. I was overdressed. Because it was quite a sunny day, it wasn't a cold day. I took my scarf and that black and red one because everywhere I took it we won and I thought I've got to bring it today. It was Fortress Etienne and we, we were quite confident so I wasn't superstitious or worried. I thought we'd, it's been a good season, you know, um, knowing us will we'll gnarls it up somehow today but we're still in it so, so that's a great thing. I just had a, a baby girl like five days before so I was probably a bit knackered but slightly euphoric uh, still and also thinking this is amazing I've just had a little baby girl now going to go see City win the uh, league for the first time in you know, God knows how long first time in my life we were dead excited but we just thought well this is just going to be this is the start of a fantastic day we're going to go we're going to beat them quite easily and then we're going to go out and have a great time there was definitely a buzz about the place that we were going to win I know we just won the FA Cup the year before but to win the league is a massive thing for fans. How many years was it? 44 years? It, it just felt like this was the day that 20 years had been building up to. It wasn't just an ordinary crazy game. It's, it was a game that had, you know, decades of frustration. It doesn't get bigger than this. Manchester City are 90 minutes away from winning the Premier League for the first time. There were no nerves before the game, but when the game started, then the nerves kicked in. Mike Dean is our referee and he gets us underway for what should be a thrilling afternoon. They were very defensive, weren't they? And I think that that almost made the nerves even more. All the play, and I mean literally all the play, is condensed in an area 10 yards outside the QPR penalty area. I thought it, the first half was quite a tight game, and he, the QPR were quite defensively, and it was all about breaking him down, and eventually we managed to get the goal. It was just, just such a burst of relief. It was actually a pretty good goal. I mean, it took some luck, but it was a good goal. Yaya Toure into Zabaleta, good hit, it's in, it's in, it's Pablo Zabaleta's first Premier League goal of the season. I had four beers and I was just like, what am I supposed to do now? So I just dumped them next to a steward, I was like, watch them, and ran down and I just ran through bodies. I was so happy that it was Zabaleta that had got the goal as well, because it's just like, Yes, you, you want it to be someone like that. 
Half-time reached at the Etihad Stadium. Manchester City have one hand back on the Premier League trophy. We go in one up, don't we? So I'm thinking, OK, well, that's a good start. Let's go the first one, then we'll just um, steamroll them. That was the start of us going on and probably winning 2-3-4-0 quite easily and, and, and picking up the trophy, and, and that was how it was supposed to be written. We weren't playing all that well. It was a, the writing was a little bit on the wall, but still, well, you know, we'll come out with the second half and they'll play better. Then. We're there one nil, man up, man, so let's keep it like that, man. We can do it, I always reckon we can do it, man. It's just whether we can or not, whether it's our time, you know what I mean? But yeah, I reckon we can do it, man. Without a doubt, I reckon we, yeah, it's good. Who would else would like to score, see you score more? Aguero, Tevez, anyone? Joe Hart, me. As my recollection, they, they score pretty soon after the half, don't they? So, you know, you're then on your nails again, biting your nails again. Oh, Lescott's headed backwards, and it's CC for QPR! Oh, that wasn't in the script! And I remember thinking, hang on a minute, what's going on here? It's like, it's... You suddenly, I suddenly remembered, I'm a City fan. At that time, we were thinking, no, surely we can't, we can't. But then everybody was on the radio and on, 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 on the phones. Oh, and Tevez has gone down on the edge of the penalty area here. The assistant has spotted the incident. Well, hearts in the mouths here is that referee gets the word from his official, but Mike Dean produces a red card. At that point, once once they were, they were down to ten men, and I'm thinking, surely we can let this slip now. It was panic, wasn't it? Where, where I was, it was. Can't could, believe. It was, can't believe that we're throwing this away. Mm. Just instantly deflated in a way that I, I don't think I've ever felt before. Try always escape the challenge of company down the left. He has options in the area. Oh, Mackie's arriving! Will QPR lead the game? Um, my dad was trying to console me, even though he knew we were gonna not do it. It was horrific for that time period. I couldn't deal with it. I wanted to fix it. You know, if I could have fixed it, of course I'd have fixed it. But you just, and, and the thing is, I'm probably feeling worse than him inside. I've just done it, you've done it so many times through the years where I've like turned to my dad and just gone, I can't believe this. But, but it just felt so us. From coming back from eight points, was it? We six, five, six to go against United. United don't slip up with that. And then we go and mess it up. I guess I just got a bit confused because I was, I was sort of willing us to do something and it, and, and it almost didn't matter what United did unless we did something and we were behind and we needed to do something. I kept on feeling my arm to be honest. And I was looking at my son Bradley and I'm just, I'm just thinking, what have I done? What have I done? And then the clock just running down, I remember the clock running down, but like 80 minutes, 81, 82, 83. Fast and thinking, and we had chances. Five minutes of added on time, here's Balotelli, it's blocked! It's excruciating. You, know, you can pinch a goal at any point, but needing two, yeah, the, it just didn't feel like there was anything like enough time. The minutes ticked by, and it got to 80, so I'm thinking in my head, right, we've got 10 minutes to change this. It wasn't making a great deal of sense to the radio, because I just needed, we were behind at that stage, and we needed, we needed something because United were ahead. Just a pit in the stomach, for me anyway. It was just oh, like, all the, all the good stuff that I talked about happening that week. It was just, <laughs> cru it was just cruelty, you know what I mean? It's, but that's what being a City fan is, often. It's silver. Dzeko scored, and finally we had a chance to get back in there. Swings it in, Dzeko's there, it's in! City have got to go back, it's Dzeko! No, I didn't move. Didn't move. Purely because I thought, too little, too late. And, and you start asking around, trying to find out how much time's left. About one, about one, about one. 
you know, you just want one more chance, just, just, just one more. And looking around me, and I was doing it too, the whole ground seemed to just be doing this. Get back, get, get it back to the goal, get it back to the goal, do it again. Because I thought it's not going to happen. Even getting the equaliser, at, at, at that point then, I was, I'd given up. At 2-2, two -two, I put Bob Marley on. I was listening to um, Three Little Birds, like, because, I don't know, just because I was thinking, I can't cope with this anymore. <laughs> 89 minutes and I looked at Brad and I said, Brad, I'm turning my phone off. I don't know when it's coming back on. I'm turning it off and I've got this big, big tattoo on me. And what am I going to do? I need a hacksaw. I knew that I wanted to stay, but I also was thinking about just how awful I was going to feel when that final whistle went. And then I got my phone out and started texting my friend who's a United fan saying, I don't even know why I did it, because... Well, this all makes for it, though, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I texted her and said, um, congratulations. So I just said to my dad, like, I, I actually can't stay here. Let's just go up there and we'll, we'll peep around, we'll watch the end from there, and then we'll just do one as quickly as possible. Whilst we were up there, my dad said, right, well, I'll just nip to the loo while you stay there. And I was just stood on my own. And I think at that moment, the whole gravity of how devastated I was just descended on me all at once so uh, I was still waiting for him but then I just put my back against the wall slumped down and just decided to have a bit of a cry about it. We're at 2 all. there was a break up in attacking play. Great challenge from Zavaleta and Nasri lets a run out of play but he shouldn't have done. And then Nasri starts flapping around with it and it, more and more I'm seeing that, I'm just getting annoyed and he tries taking the own throw and I'm just thinking time's running out here and I just lose it completely. The most dramatic end to any Premier League season. I don't ask me why I did it. Maybe it's because it was in me hand or something, I just, that's what I did. I don't think you, you really believe it's going to happen but you just pray against all hope that it will. We have just over two minutes of added on time remaining. Down the line it goes up towards Bothroyd, headed for by Lescott. There's still hope. It was like energy was just building. And I can't remember the noises, but it, it was... It just, it just built and built and built. I could hear everybody cheering. I, could, I was trying to reach for my dad and then he reached for me and it was like, and then I was able to see. Together has been the club's motto. Can they produce it right at the end? The whole stadium with 50,000 or whatever people in it, it must have been for a hundredth of a second. It just went completely silent. Aguero, if anyone can, it's him. As soon as it went to Aguero, I was just screaming, shoot, shoot. That's what I didn't see any of the build up, <laughs> but I literally saw Aguero score the goal, and I was just like, Mayhem. wow. I, I remember the strike and, and hitting the back of the net, uh, and then everybody just going nuts. Brilliant. It runs for Aguero! They do it! City win the title! It's Aguero with his 30th goal of the season! I don't believe what I'm seeing! Manchester City are the champions of England! And Aguero gets it in annual time! Have you ever seen anything like this before? The collective letting out of yeah. joy yeah. and... But also, yeah, this purging. Failure. It was just a mate. It was extraordinary. I've never known anything like it. Unbelievable scenes! And it was just disbelief. And that's when the tears started pouring out of my eyes because I was shocked. And I turned round and as soon as that I nearly fainted, went back to the seat, so and then I just ripped my top off. And then I got my tattoo out and everybody looking thinking, what would you have done? And I just think, well, that's just me, that's what I do. I was just lost in that moment, right before he struck the ball. You can see it on, on, the, on the phone. I remember like looking like, where is my dad? Uh, like, is he still in the toilet? People were in tears, people were hugging, people were jumping up and down. It was probably the best, one of the best moments of my life so far. My brother rang me up, screaming, celebrating. He was like, I've just spoke to dad. And uh, he'd gone back to the car because um, when he'd come out the toilet, because I'd slumped to the floor crying, he'd come out and <laughs> looked around and he thought I'd just gone, so he'd um, run off to go and find me. It's 
exactly as I expected. Give me a heart attack. I love them, but they give me a heart attack. Before the match, I never thought I would win the pitch. You know, we'd win it and the presentation and what have you. But one gets overcome by that sort of emotion. Fans are on the pitch to celebrate with their heroes. I went on the pitch in Newcastle and I had waited 44 years. I'm sure they can hardly stand the tension, I know I can't. And there it is, Manchester City are the champions of the First Division. League. After that drama, you know, you couldn't hold back the fact that it was 44 years. Somehow or another, which was rather silly, I wanted to get to the players and congratulate them. And I realised I'm not going to be able to do that. To watch all the celebrations and it was just uh, emotional, it was un unbelievable. And to see, obviously, the, uh, the clock being taken away from um, Old Trafford and, it, you know, it's 44 years, that's going down to zero now. This is it. There's nowhere else anyone no. on this world could yeah, ever wish to be in, than in this place right now. For that turnaround in that tiny space of time and also what was at stake, you know, it was between two bigger rivals that you'll ever get. Um, yeah, like, it's got to be up there, hasn't it? Yeah, I was mentally drained then, yeah, I just, I just sat there for about half an hour. Just thinking, what's just happened? 1937, 1968, now 2012. For the third time in their history, Manchester City are the champions. I mean, it's vintage City, though, isn't it? We just we don't beat Gillingham easily. We don't beat Blackburn easily. We don't beat Q, you know QPR easily. We don't beat anyone easily. So you know, so who knows what's coming next? <laughs>